Pe people say, uh, look, this prophecy in Revelation is done about Babylon. And look, uh, America went to war and this is what's happening right now. Babylon is falling in one hour. That Babylon prophecy happened centuries ago. This is not about now or 10 years ago or 20 years ago. You understand? Yes. When Twin Towers came down and America attacked Iraq, it doesn't mean that Babylon is just the same Babylon. What people don't understand is once God says something, it's a prophecy. What prophecy means, it doesn't mean prediction. It's not, it's not a fortune telling business. God says, let there be man, and, let, and there was. Let there be light, and there was. This is prophecy. This is literally prophecy. He's teaching you prophecy from, from the beginning, from the first letter of the Genesis. He's saying, let there be light. Yes. That's, that's the principle of prophecy. Prophecy is not merely predicting the future. Yeah, you can be predicting the future, not because you're predicting it, because you're seeing it. Yeah. And you say it, and it comes to pass. And that's why it says, Abraham uh, said, call those things that are not as though they are. That is a prophecy. Because he could see those things, although they weren't there, he could see them and said as they were there, mm -hmm. as though they were. And it happened. They come to pass. It's a prophecy. God says, cursed is the man who is hung on the tree. Now, this happened when Jesus went on the cross. But it happens all the time. When somebody is on the tree, hung, he's cursed. And this even happens in films when they make film of Jesus. The person goes on the crucifix, it gets lightning struck struck by lightning or something happens mm -hmm. because they cares this is the word of this is the word of god not, doesn't go back to his face without achieving his purpose yes like rain it says rain doesn't fall on the ground and it doesn't go back to the sky without wetting the ground now babylon uh, the, the prophecy of babylon in revelation has already happened centuries ago but that Babylon is gone and, and it says there will be no more uh, sound of lyre or music heard in that like there will there will be no more weddings there there will, there will be no more any of joy there it's finished that means it's destroyed to ashes gone and to this day nobody's built that Babylon ever again that tower tower now but they have built other Babylons around the world, like European Union, like America, United States. And the, the Babylon of this world at the moment, as we talk, is America. Europe wanted to be the Babylon of the world, but it hasn't so far achieved and, and they kept falling. Why? Again, because of the prophecy. This Babylon in America, now they want to be, to have this globalist or yeah, globalist agenda to have this pyramid to rule over the world, the new world order. That is again a par uh, another ba Babylonian tower. Now it can be built in America, it could be built in Cyprus, it could be built anywhere. Wh wherever it is, that prophecy comes true again. So prophecies repeat? Prophecies repeat, yeah. Prophecies repeat. If you fulfill those conditions, if you fulfill those conditions, like go on the tree, get yourself hung on the tree, then you're cursed. Yeah. You'll die. Or, or whatever, you know, whatever you think of it. Um, Babylon is the same thing. So, not because now that prophecy is in the Revelation number, you know, I don't know what chapter, what verse now, off the top of my head. But wherever it is, it's, uh, if you look at it, we've already passed that. So, we're not in that time. But that time is already that prophecy is already there. So if you come, if you try to fulfill that again, it'll come to you again. It'll, it'll haunt you. Yeah, but this is talking about a whole nation, whatever that prophecy is. 
about O Babylon. Your, Babylon, your, Babylon. Ships, your ships yeah, are gone, your you merchants fell. are... Yeah, you fell. You There's, fell overnight. In, uh, in, in one, one hour. hour. In one hour, your ruin came. Mm -hmm. yeah, so what, what are you saying, nation? It's, it's about that Babylon that was ruling the, um, the, the whole world. Business was there. The, the, the wall, yeah, so is wall that Street that is now in New York was there. Yeah. Uh, and now, uh, I tell you, the, the Amer America is not uh, the center of finance in the world. New York, Wall Street is not, although you, you, you think it is, but it's not uh, the center of uh, controlling the money in the world. Controlling the money is number, number 10 Downing Street in London. That's where controls the money. Controlling the world is America. Wall Street is not the center of economy in the world. The uh, center of economy in the world is London, not uh, Wall Street. They have some influence, but it's not the control. The control center of finance or economy in the world is London. And that is why they always keep their money separate from the Europe, from the from, uh, European Union, from the Euro. They never got their money mixed. Because they know once they do that, they, that is the end of, end of Britain. Britain will collapse. And Britain collapses. The economy of Britain collapses. The world will collapse. Of the economic crash of the whole world. Wars and um, all to do with armaments is America. That's the same thing. That's where it comes from. Because the, the, the world most powerful army in the world is America. And that's where they supply all the weaponry. Now, the ba uh, merchants and all that that comes from Babylon, if you want to make it America, it will, the same prophecy, the same as happened to actual Babylon, the original Babylon it will happen to America if, if it is uh, to be Europe, the European Union, uh, the same thing will happen to that. As simple as that. Prophecies, if the conditions, those things have fulfilled all the conditions of that situation, that condition has happened, fulfilled, then the prophecy will come to pass. Otherwise, it won't because it hasn't happened. It's not the same Babylon. It's not the same person. If you if you go up a tree to uh, pick some apples, you're not hung on the tree. You're not cursed. You know. You understand. Yes. You have to. You have to actually fulfill all those little things that has been said. Then that prophecy will come to pass. Okay. So, what about the prophecy that says? They will receive a mark in their hand or their forehead, and no man can buy or sell lest they receive a mark in their hand or forehead. That has never happened, but it's a prophecy. Yeah. They've never had a chip in someone's hand or a chip in someone's forehead. So it's only certain prophecies that happened, or just those conditions haven't been fulfilled? It hasn't happened. First of all, it hasn't, it hasn't happened exactly. We're going that way. Yes. Because we've already got the mark of the beast. We haven't got it in our head or hand. But well, we've already got the mark of the beast. Uh, first, it started with, let's just go back. Maybe it started even before that, but let's just go with barcodes. And people were saying, oh, here, look at this six and six and six. Six at the beginning, six in the middle, and six at the end is the barcode. It was the beginning. It was just the beginning of the end. The introduction of the introduction. technology yeah. of the beast. So the, then, then there is this um, cards you had to sign. Uh, then they moved on from s signature to uh, just swiping the card. Then they moved into uh, touchless, contactless uh, cards. Now it's going to your mobile. You pay with your mobile. Yeah, and a few people have even been shifted. And, and some as some as companies, as yeah, some companies have already done that, and some people voluntarily have gone. At, I believe in America, some some companies, and put the chip in their hands. But that chip is going to be even even smaller if it's a chip. It might be even liquid. Uh, people were saying about vaccines as well. 
it, it could happen. Now, the technology is there to, to make it liquid. For so yeah. So what we saying about that? That that hasn't happened exactly as the as the exact uh, conditions stated in the Bible that you will have a mark on your forehead or in your hand. We haven't had that yet. We have we have it in our hand because it's a mobile and lots of people are, have seen them using it to pay. This is where they have to stop. This is now, it's getting too far actually, too late to put your foot down. Christians, I mean, they have to put their foot down and say enough is enough. We're stopping it here because the only, the next step is actually going in your hand. At the moment, you're holding it in your hand, but it's not in your flesh. The next step will be actually, let's hang, hang on, they'll come up with something. Uh, the, identity theft can happen easily. Uh, your mobile, people have lost their mobiles and they could uh, use their identity or they use their mobile to pay for the bills, this, that. And they just make a scenario for people to accept it and lots of gullible people will go along with it and say, oh yeah, that's dangerous, so let's just go with it. Chip in your hand, nobody can steal. And if anybody try to steal, uh, you'll die or something you know seriously will happen. Yeah, they're good at creating scenarios so, yeah. to force their things. So so yeah, that, that hasn't happened fully, but we are not too far from it. But this is the time you have to put your foot down and not accept those things or at least don't don't go along with it and, and use it. Yeah, I wanna say I think you know these things are prophesied, prophesied in scripture, but we know we have power as Christians to pray. And even though these things are prophesied and they will happen, I think how they happen and how soon they happen and how it pans out is down to Christians actually praying, genuinely. Because we can yeah, because change the future. Yes, we we can. can't change that prophecy. The, if it's the prophecy prophesied... Can't, you, you can't change the prophecy. The prophecy is going to happen. The, 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 new, the, new, the new world order will happen. It can be delayed. Yes. It will happen, one way or the other, it will happen. Why I say that? Because it says clearly in the Bible that there will be a new, uh, uh, there will be another king that rose, it says in the Revelation, that, and there will be another king, the last one. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this, this last one is trying to merge iron and clay. clay. Yeah. You're talking about the statue in Daniel. Yeah, statue. Yeah, in, in Daniel, the prophecy says uh, this statue that Daniel sees, uh, his feet were made out of something and his chest is something, something, thighs something. Yeah. These are all different empires, different kings that will come. In the last one that will come, is trying to m merge iron, iron and, clay. and clay and they won't melt, they won't. They merge merge. together and they'll collapse. Yeah. So this is this is what I, I believe we're trying to do at, at this moment in time, as, as we speak, or last decade or so. Uh, they were trying to do this uh, in, in in Europe particularly, and uh, it doesn't merge. Uh, German Germany opened its doors to all these Islamic countries, and they have come. And you see what the problem is now, right now. Uh, right as we speak, they're, they're trying to destroy all the mosques in Germany. Yes. Uh, so, so, so you see as the iron and clay as in uh, Eastern culture and Western culture trying to merge not, and it just doesn't work? Not, yeah, not necessarily culture, it's just the, uh, we're not even talking about the iron and clay, we're just talking about that this new world has ideas that don't really work. Okay. They have different ideas, they're, they're not necessarily practical. And uh, uh, there, will, there will be a ruler that will obviously bring this mark of the beast and all that. Uh, how do they do that? The only way they can do that is having actually one world order, one king or one ruler over the earth. Otherwise, because they, they have to make all the money or the currency the same, all religion the same, and they call it good. And that is all written in the prophecies. So that all has to happen to make one religion, one God, one uh, uh, nation, no borders. And all these things are agendas of these globalists. They don't want any borders. 
You can see that in America, they don't want the border. You, you can see that in Europe, they don't want a border. They, all the globalists, not the nationalists. Globalists don't want a border, and that's why they open the borders to uh, the East, Eastern Europe, and all those uh, people came in with their own cultures, with their own finances, and that's why the economy of Europe collapsed uh, a few years ago, yeah. because, uh, let's say, uh, whole Europe uh, is about 20 odd countries, 24 countries joined together in the European Union. Yeah. Originally it was seven countries. Now it's expanding and expanding. It's like Europe, they want to expand the geography, extend the lines of uh, yeah. map. And, and so uh, a few solid con countries, as far as economy is concerned, only a handful, maybe two or three uh, countries in Europe uh, that are economically sound and solid, like Germany, France and uh, Britain, if you consider it as part of the European Union. Uh, and these three, four countries, and uh, if you consider uh, those little Dutch countries like Netherlands or Switzerland, those, those powerful countries that are actually financially, economically doing well uh, and uh, they are the ones holding or yeah, uh, holding up the, the rest of the countries in Europe. Most of the countries in Europe now, they're all third world countries. Yeah, that's true. You imagine uh, Czech Republic. Uh, Bosnia Herzegovina. Uh, imagine uh, Portugal. Imagine even Spain and Italy. They're not doing Greece. Uh, they've been yeah, bailed they've out been. over and over yeah, by who? By much. these powerful, uh, financially powerful and strong countries. And of course, the people wouldn't like that because you're basically every year you're loaning, you're giving loan to them, and the economy of their own country. It just cascades down to normal, average, everyday Joe who has to bear the burden of some uh, siblings. Yeah, you know? that's right, yeah. So, th this is why uh, it, do it, doesn't mer it doesn't merge. You, you, they're trying to have no borders and they want to even expand that further. And uh, they've opened borders. Uh, they don't want borders because they see the world as a small village. Mm -hmm. You know, they see it as a small village, like they call it. And uh, they don't want border. They want one language, one currency, one religion, uh, which they call good, and it's all prophesied. So it, all these things, they are trying. They're not. I don't think they're actually sitting, sat there, uh, and studied the Bible and thought to themselves, let's fulfill all these things. As God has his own agenda, globalists uh, has their own agenda, and, and Satan has his own agenda. At the top of this pyramid of globalists, if you call it globalists, before, pre, before if you call it pre-Trump presidency, yeah. in, in the first, uh, first time of his presidency, uh, he, he called them globalists. Uh, I, now I'm not advocating him, or I'm not saying he is is part of it or is not part of it. But I, I don't really uh, want to talk in per about a person in particular. But um, he mentioned something. He said he called them globalists, and after that, it became so popular, and people used it as you know as a byword mm -hmm. for globalists. Before that, they called them elites, Illuminati, Freemasons, all those names. Yeah. But they're all the same. It's the same thing. Yeah. It's the same agenda, same uh, spirit. Uh, I call them Antichrist. The Antichrist, Jesus says, the spirit of Antichrist is here. Because the spirit of globalism, imperialism, was already there. Yeah. They wanted, some, some people had this idea to rule the world and have the whole world in their own control. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the people of the world. Control the people of the world. Yes. So, the spirit is there. So, I, 
you know, the, the idea of this antichrist. Antichrist is a spirit and that person on top of the pyramid is actual Satan. The top top is Satan. Mm -hmm. So it's Satan who is orchestrating all these plans and it, as it happens, it just happens to be fulfilling the prophecies. Satan is stupid because he's doing it, but he wants it that way because because he thinks he can he can achieve his purposes. Yeah, I think he, he thinks can. he can win, like he thought he could win by putting Jesus on the cross. He thought that is it, that's finished. Yeah, he didn't know he would raise in yeah, three days. He didn't know that he's actually helping to fulfill the prophecies. Yeah, he helped. Mm -hmm. Jesus himself said that to the twelve, he said. Have I not picked you, the twelve, but one of you is a devil? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? That means, although I have picked you, I have chosen you, but I know, I know what you're going to do. I know if one of you is going to betray me, whether you call it betrayal or whatever, basically going to fulfill the prophecies of God. So I, you know, I, I don't want to get into Judas, Judas because Judas is another thing. It's another controversy. If I talk about that, it's another sermon, and and uh, probably people will get up in arms in in the whole church, Christian churches, if I talk about that, because the the idea usually is that uh, he betrayed Jesus and he got he he hung himself and and he is in hell now. I, I have a different opinion and different. Uh, yeah, if you call it opinion, but I, I am not uh, going along with any of these set doctrines, like I don't do with any of these set doctrines, uh, as far as anything else is concerned. I just believe what I see and what I read myself. I, you know, I try to rely on my own discernment, spiritual discernment, rather than listening to some doctrine or, uh, you know this doctrine says this and that doctrine says that so you have to choose between them I, ch I choose none of them I choose what God tells me is right yeah so that's that's me uh, but that sets me apart from the um, the other preachers or teachers of, of the Bible some people like it some people don't like it you can like me or hate me I don't care but this is this is what I believe and, and like I said, I don't want to go into that, but I just want to say, Jesus picked him, the same as that, uh, the same as that Jesus picked Judas, and he betrayed him. He knew that he for he had the foreknowledge. He knew he was going to betray him. It's not like he didn't know. It was just an accident. Judas didn't know that, but he knew. Even Peter didn't know he was going to betray him yeah. and say he didn't know him three times because he was so sure that nobody is going, I'm going with you to the cross if I have to. You know, so the same way God has chosen the rulers of the world, but he knows their game. Mm -hmm. He knows their game beforehand. Yeah. He knows their aims and their games and their purposes. But well, he uses those for their own, for his own purposes. Yeah. But the, God, the kings of the earth, the rulers, think that they can achieve their purposes. Like Pharaoh. God gave Pharaoh chances and chances and chances over and over. So he would repent. If he did repent, what would happen? Well, we can write scenarios, different scenarios about that, write books about it. What would happen if he repented and he gave uh, Israelites, you know, freedom? to go back, to worship their God, and do whatever they wanted to do. But in the end, God knew, from the beginning, He knew what He was going to do. But He was giving Him chances to, to repent. And, and He has always provisions for anything that happens. He's not, he, you can never surprise God. <laughs> you can never say, okay, well, you know, I've got you. Because whatever you do, He's already had that for, for knowledge. He's omnipresent. And he knows, uh, omnipotent, omnipresent, he knows the future. This is future for us, but for him it's not future, you can see it now. If you look at an ant that's walking on the floor of your room, uh, that ant doesn't know where it's going. It has to smell around and go around 
uh, your shoes, uh, the table here and there. You go find a little bit here, a little bit there, and then maybe find its own way back home again. But you can see everything. Mm -hmm. You're from above. You can see everything. It's yeah. the same way. God can see everything. God can see where you're going, where you're heading, what your plans are. You might have a change of heart. You might not have a change of heart. But if for either any cases, God is prepared and prepared the path for you, and He wants the best for you. You might not choose that, but He wants the best for you. So going back to the prophecies, prophecies are there. We are uh, inadvertently. As, as men, not necessarily as Christians. We are fulfilling them and we are going towards that, this, that end day. Mm -hmm. and, and when it comes to that, when it's fulfilled, then all those things will happen. Look what happened in, uh, uh, when uh, Noah made that ark. Nothing happened. The, the, the ark was being built, animals were still grazing, uh, going around, people were going around, probably laughing at him, Whatever they were doing, they were just carrying on their life. It says that clearly in the scripture. Yeah, it says before that 120 the flood, years yeah, it if, was going on. Yeah, all that time, it says before the flood, people were giving, Jesus says that himself, people were giving a marriage mm -hmm. and um, taking and this and that. Yeah. Like it was just as normal as any day. Yeah. And he says, Jesus says about the, the end day, he says it's going to be the same. So you won't see it coming no. unless you have the discernment yeah. of the Spirit. You don't see it coming. Luke, Luke is coming. Uh, and he even warns you. He says, don't listen to prophets, false prophets who say, look, Jesus is here. Come to the desert. Look on the mountain here and there. When I come, everybody will know. You will know. Mm. You, know you won't have any doubt. The same way he says it's going to be the same as the Noah's days when the ark's door was shut, yes. rain came, flood came. Mm -hmm. that, is the, that is the fulfillment of the prophecy. The ark's door had to be shut mm -hmm. and the animals had to be in. You know, if the ark's door was shut and there was no animals, no, no, nobody there, still flood wouldn't come. Yes. It had to be fulfilling all those conditions, and when it's, once it's fulfilled, it will happen. Because that prophecy, the word has been spoken, God has spoken those words for that moment, for that purpose, for that uh, instance. Mm -hmm. So it's the same with everything else, and, and Jesus is clear, clearly making that example to just say it's going to be the same way. So don't think, you know. Uh, you know, you can, you can predict it, you can discern, you can have a discernment and say we are heading that way, we're near, and the Antichrist is here because Jesus himself said the spirit of Antichrist is already here. So all those things, and, and people saying uh, the end, end uh, of the days or end days is going to be here, this year, they predicted it was 20, uh, 2002. You know, some prophets were saying, oh, 2002, this is the year. Uh, and this is the year the world is going to end as we know it. They were cleverly saying that. So, you know, if you got them later, in 2003, you would say, I told you as it is, the world as we know it. <laughs> but you can say that about anything. Mm -hmm. You know, you can say about yourself, I will be finished today as you know me. Because tomorrow you're not the same person. Yeah. You know, this house is not going to be the same. Uh, uh, after today, not going to be the same as we know it tomorrow. Uh, yeah, because something is going to happen. The grass is going to be a little bit grow, grown up and a little taller. <laughs> so it's going to be different yeah. if you look at it. But so you, you, no, uh, you know you need to have the discernment. Uh, uh, you can't say this year or that year because Jesus says uh, the spirit of Antichrist is already here. That means. We already, we've already fulfilled everything. One thing that we haven't fulfilled for the end day that we don't know, we can never be sure of, is the number of martyrs. Mm -hmm. Because it says this number of martyrs have, be, have to be fulfilled. Yeah. And that is something that no man on this planet can say, whether it's been fulfilled or not, yeah, or when it's going to be fulfilled. 
so, or, or who those married martyrs are. So that is one thing that you can, if you're talking about earthquakes, flooding, uh, calamities like that, it's happening every year. Yeah. And it is increasing, yes. It is increasing. Yeah, like labor pain is increasing, yeah. get closer and closer yeah. together. So that yeah. just in the case we are getting closer, and like we were talking about Mark of the Beast, we're obviously closer. In every angle you look at it, we are closer, and we're fulfilling more and more conditions. But we're really, we've fulfilled most of it, apart from that one that we don't know, we can never know. So what do you see, um, do you want to say what you see for the future of America, what you envision? Amer America, America, you America is not going to be part of the, uh, the last days. Amer America is not going to be as, <laughs> I'm going to use the same thing as we know it. <laughs> not, America is not going to be as we know it, the most powerful country in the world, uh, at least the last days. Either it's going to be completely gone, I don't know how, physically gone or what, but it's not going to be the Babylon, it's not going to play a big role there, a big role player. America is not part of it, because if you look at Daniel or Revelation, there's no sign of, yeah. uh, obviously there's no name, America is a new thing, but, yeah. uh, but there's no sign of any symbolic uh, showing that this is, this is America. All, all refers to either, you know, around the Middle East, everything is about Middle East and, and Europe. Yeah. Uh, so, the center of, center of uh, epicenter is, is Middle East, it's always been. And the end is going to be because Jesus comes to the Middle East, he has come from there and he will come back to there. And then uh, also uh, Europe, Europe has got the uh, will have the uh, will have a big role there either they can they can like you were saying they can play a good role as a good person good nation good country good role player or they can play the bad you know the, they can play the devil in disguise yeah 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 okay so they, they have the choices. Every country has their own choices. Um, you, you look at the history. You see, one country sometimes has been on the side of the God, on the side of God, and later, after changes has happened in that country, they have moved away from God. Israel itself. If you look at Israel, yeah. uh, God at one point calls them Israelites, uh, my chosen people. And then another minute, it says, most arrogant people, stiff necks, stiff necks, yeah. uh, people. Stubborn, yes. Yeah. So, it, and, and, they, and he says, they, they, you have to repent. And he says that to Israel many times, Israelites. It, you know, this is the, uh, look, uh, uh, the sim symbolically is talking about a girl that is um, growing growing breasts yeah. and yeah. Uh, then mocking uh, herself, you know, and all that. Mm -hmm. Mocking herself? Yeah, she, she says she grows in blood or something. Yeah, it says um, as a child you were, you were in your own blood in a field. I don't know what prophet that is, I have to look it up which, which of the prophetic books is in. And then as you grew, you were young and beautiful, and then you started uh, playing the harlot with all these other nations and taking part in their sin and stuff. Yeah, so that, that like is that. When, yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. They went away from God. They started with God, and yeah. then they went away from God. Like Solomon. Solomon starts off good, yeah. and then he ends up Horrible. with, with uh, foreign gods and all that in his own palace. Yeah. And the same, Israel Israel does the same thing. He's saying you, you started off good, but then you go to, uh, you know, prostitution and all that. And uh, so you need to repent. This is symbolism of Israel because Israel uh, went away, obviously. And, and, and uh, you know, people, what people don't understand is Judaism. Uh, they think Judaism is just another, uh, you know, 
half brother of Christianity, but they're not. They, they, uh, uh, Judaism uh, or people who are Jews, basically, uh, what it, this is going to open another <laughs> another chapter. I'm just going to have to actually, yeah, it has to be con continued on a different series now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because Judaism, when you talk about Judaism, you talk about uh, a faith. What people don't understand, especially in America and, and, and Europe as well, uh, most people in the churches, they don't understand Jewish being a Jew or Jewishness or uh, being a Jew is actually practicing a faith which is Judaism and that is following uh, yeah. Moses you know following followers of Moses basically yeah which is different than being Israeli yeah. which is you're but, born into that citizenship yeah. Yeah. but or, Israelites when you say Israelites they were children of Israel yes as simple as that Israel whose name was changed to Israel from Jacob from Jacob so those are Israelites. Now, if anybody wants to claim that I am an Israelite, that they have to actually prove their ancestry back to Israel, yeah. back to Jacob. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be easy. <laughs> if, if not difficult, it's not going to be easy. So anybody living in Israel doesn't mean they're Israelites. And anybody being a Jew doesn't mean they're Israelites or pro-Israelis. There are lots of Jews who are against the, uh, the regime in, in Israel. Yes. Right at this moment. Yes. And they have been. So, and, and those are practice, practicing Jews. Judaism is basically a faith. Same as Christianity, same as anything else. Any other religion or faith. But we, we might not consider ourselves as a Christian, as practicing a religion, because we, call, we like to call ourselves practicing a faith, believing in, believing in some cer certain principles and following a faith not a religion because religion when you talk about religion we talk about rules rules of duties do's and don'ts and that is what's happening with uh, judaism judaism have 10 commandments and then they came up with 613 more or all together 613 laws mm -hmm. which they have on their shoulders and and yeah. all those threads mm -hmm. that have you know those, those strings that are coming out of their shawls that they always wear is indicating of the 613 laws that they they follow every day and they believe they're abiding by those laws but um, Jesus comes and says, you can't abide with all those laws because as soon as you wake up as soon as you have a, the wrong thought that is it you've broken the law and once you've broken one law you've broken them all so this is simple it's saying that we're not under the law we're above the law and and he was accused his, his uh, disciples were accused of picking corn on, on the sabbath and this and that yeah. going to the temple breaking the rules of uh, judaism so what i'm trying to say is being a jew or jewishness is not a race it's a faith mm -hmm. so you can be born in India and uh, in, in a family of Hinduism who is practicing Hinduism mm -hmm. and then suddenly they realize no actually I don't like this I want to be a Jew mm -hmm. and you can be a Jew yeah the same as any other religion mm -hmm. uh, you, you can be a Jew you can be born into a Jewish family but you're not a Jew you're not nothing when you're born you're nothing yes but the idea the uh, uh, understanding is when you go to Israel, uh, all those Middle Eastern countries, when you go into them, and I know, I, I, I can tell you, you can ask me, I'll tell you, because <laughs> that's how it is. Go, you go to any of those Middle Eastern countries, they consider you, uh, uh, your religion is almost as good as your nationality. It's like born. It's, it's like just it's a, your DNA. It's just like a nationality. Yeah. So if you're born in Turkey, the understanding is is you're Muslim. Mm -hmm. If you're born in uh, Iran, the understanding is uh, you're by 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 and large you're Muslim. Yeah. There are some now there are different sects of it, but that's not the point we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. The same the same exact thing is happening. If you're born in Israel, the the the, the understanding the it's given. 
that you are a Jew. You understand? But you're not necessarily a Jew because you have to actually practice Judaism to be yeah, a Jew. Exactly. But this is, uh, my argument is, with all the uh, churches who believe that Judaism is just our half-brother as, as Christians. You know, Christianity yeah. and Judaism is just half-brothers. They're not. They're not. They're nothing the like. Mm -hmm. Nothing like at all. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we are above the law. They're under the law. Yeah. You know, I've had this discussion with actual uh, 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 what are these Jewish Christians they call Messianic themselves Jews. Messianic Jews. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just don't get it. You either Jew or a Christian. Mm -hmm. You cannot be a Jewish Christian. You just cannot be. The, the, the reason they say that, and it's usually Western people that say that. There is no, there is no actual Israeli who say I'm a I'm a Jewish Christian. They'll never say that. If, if they convert to Christianity, they will never say that. Because they know Judaism is not the same as Christianity. And you can't be a Jew and Christian because you, it's not a race. It's not a nationality. It is taught that way. It is considered that way in the country of Israel and in most countries. But it doesn't mean that it's true because nationality has nothing to do with your religion or your faith. You have to grow and make up your mind that you want to practice that faith or, or religion. Mm -hmm. But uh, Messianic Jews, they think by race we are Jews. We're based, they want to basically say we are related to Jesus. Yeah. We're related to Mary. We're related to Mo, you, Joseph. We're related to Israel, mm -hmm. Jacob, and, and our forefather is Abraham. That's all they want to say. Well, we can say that because Jesus says that very clearly and plainly. He says, out of these stones, God can make children of Abraham. Mm -hmm. So why are we going around the bush, beating about the bush, just to prove that I am so close to Abraham? There's no difference. Mm -hmm. You can be an American and your forefather can be Abraham because you are following the laws. Uh, you're following Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus says, if you're not listening to me, you're not, your father is not Abraham. Your father is Satan because you're not listening to me. Mm -hmm. And who is he talking to? He is actually talking to the Jews, yeah. to the rabbis, the to the to the, the yeah, the to, to the teachers of the law. The, the, actually, they, they know it all. Yeah. And and they are offended because they say you are calling us illegitimate children of Abraham, you know. And he says, yeah, you're worse than that. Yeah, you're sons of Satan. Sons of Satan. So how clear can, can that be? But then we have people more zealous in the churches about Judaism and Jews and Israelites, or Israeli, Israelis, not Israelites, Israelis, than the Israelis themselves, because they say they are chosen people. Uh, the reason God says they are chosen people is because God chose that nation to bring Jesus into that nation. Into the that, world. Into the world, yeah. from that nation. Yes. So that is why it was a chosen nation. That's the only reason. Yeah, and you picked not because they and were you wonderful. Picked, picked the most stiff yeah, exactly. stubborn, so we would not have because, an example. Not because they were wonderful, but because they were actually horrible. Mm -hmm. they, he picked them from the worst place and from Nazareth, mm -hmm. and that was again the worst of the worst place. Yeah. So he picked Jesus, or he brought Jesus into this world in a place that you, you wouldn't even keep your dog there. You know, if you like it in this language, you want to talk it that way. He says, God says, I will frustrate the wisdom of the wise and destroy the intelligence of the intelligent. So what that means is I, I, I'm doing something amazing that you cannot figure it out with your wisdom. Yeah. You know, people couldn't figure out why Jesus comes if anything good comes out of Nazareth. You know, and it's always doing that, and that's again, that's kind of that's that's the nature of God. In the, you, you can probably find out things like that in your own personal life, that God has done things that shocked other people in your life and shocked other people. What? Who? Who did this? You? Or where? You know, when? This, all that, all those things. If you look back in your your own personal life, I don't know who you are, whether you, you're listening, you will have. I can, I can pick up lots of examples from my own life and say this, 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 this. That shocked people. 
just think, what? No, you. Mm-hmm. From there, in this place. Mm-hmm. You know, but he, he does that because that's his nature. So anyway, we were talking about uh, this Judaism that is not a race. What people consider it or actually uh, it's like a given fact that when you say somebody is a Jew, they just consider that as a race. It's a race. It's not a race. That doesn't mean somebody is a Jew doesn't mean from Israel. They're Israelites. Or Bani Israel. They're Israelites, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't mean they're Israelites. They're children of Israel. Mm. Not at all. There, there are Israelites everywhere. There are um, Muslims everywhere. There are uh, Hindu uh, p- people who practice Hinduism mm. or Hindus uh, mm. everywhere. You can find them everywhere now, especially nowadays because they, everybody's traveling. Yeah. But even going back, we're not talking about immigration and all that. We're talking about ra- this is not a race. This is a faith just as any other faith or any other religion. And it's not, in fact, a faith, it's a religion. Because they're following a certain set of rules. And, and I, this is what I was going to say. I talked to one of these Messianic Jews. Uh, and uh, this guy, the leader of that congregation, asked me. I went there as a, as a visitor. And, and I was invited there. And, and I went there. And, and this guy, at the end of their ceremonies, and they were doing all those funny dances and all that they just think you know that that can make them closer to god but it's the same as um, what they do in india there are people who sleep on nails thinking that if they suffer today they can have a better life hereafter you know the same you can't there there are uh, uh, moments we were working, I was working with some moments in a factory when, they, when we went to the changing room. It was shocking to me. I just thought, what are these they were wearing? On the, the underwear, it was like special. <laughs> 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 they had to be made out of special garments. And, and he just, you know, he just I discussed it with, with you, with my wife. Yeah. And, and, and she said, oh yeah, they're moments. They, they believe that they have to wear certain shorts. <laughs> So I said, so if they wear this, this, this special shorts, they'll go to heaven? So that's probably what they believe. But I, anyway, I'm not, I'm not discussing. What I'm saying is, free, um, I was going to say Freemasons, uh, Messianic Jews, uh, when we were there, uh, this, this guy asked me at the end of their um, ceremony or, or session, he asked me, he said, so what, God, what did God tell you about uh, Jews? And I just went, well, you know, I, I, first of all, I don't, I don't like saying, I don't ever like to say God told me something, you know, because I never, I, you, you hardly ever hear me God say God told me to say this, you know, God told me to do this. Yeah, I, God has told me a lot of things, but, you know, I, I, and I feel it in me, in my spirit, and I do them as best as I can, but I don't announce it. You know, I don't go announcing it, God told me to do this. I might have done that, I don't know, I'm not going to say deny it altogether. But uh, uh, it's something that I try to avoid as best as I can, really, because... Um, Usually, when people say, God told me this, uh, usually people in power positions, they say that, and, and they're basically saying, shut up. You can't say anything over that. Um, so I don't, I don't really like that. Um, I, I don't want to say whoever says that is wrong. I don't, I don't want to, you know, condemn them. But I don't try, I don't do that willy nilly I'll do that if, if I say that I really mean it but anyway uh, he said what God told you about you this is what God told me this is what I told him I said God God has shown me that Jews are under the law just as much as Muslims are under the law and he just set him on fire because obviously they don't like 
uh, Muslims, and just as much as they don't like Jews, but in the middle here, I am saying something that, they, that is contrary to, to what they believe and they consider those as their enemies. So what I'm saying is, both of you are under the law. And both of you, by the way, as it happens, uh, you believe in Jesus coming, right? So you have something in common. And both of you, by the way, you have your parents, your forefathers, being Abraham. You know, your cousins. Well, we know that, everybody knows that. There's no argument about that. But your, your, your fight is political and diplomatical, whatever it is, that's up to you. But what, you're asking me what God told me about you, what God told me about Jews, then this is what I'm telling you. I'm telling the truth. You're under the law. Just the fact that you are keeping the Sabbath holy, that just tells me something. Yeah. You know, I am a Christian. I am above the law. What that means, as far as Sabbath is concerned, I'm not getting together, I'm not keeping the Sabbath holy, I'm keeping, keeping the Sunday holy, Monday holy, Tuesday holy, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every day holy. Mm -hmm. Sabbath is no special to me. Mm -hmm. To them in the Old Testament it was special. It was a resting day, that God rested on that day. But that, again, it opens up another sermon, I'm not going to get into that because it's getting too long. Because uh, God, when God rested, it doesn't mean actually physically rested. He just looked at his creation and enjoyed it. That's what it means. Simple. The same as you do when you finish off your, your work, the, your day work. You just look back and just look at the washed dishes. You look at the cleaned house and you just enjoy it. That's when you rest. You don't rest. We do rest because we are physically getting tired sometimes. Mm -hmm. But God doesn't get tired or weary. No. And, and, and as you're listening to me, you're tired now because it's getting too long. <laughs> so what I'm saying is you're under the law. We are not under the law. And our uh, obedience, and abide, we have to abide by the Holy Spirit. We have to walk by the Spirit. And that's more difficult than what they're doing because they have a set of rules and laws and they abide by those and they make their own clauses. You know, if you fail to do this, do this one. If you fail to do that, to do this one, you know. So they make their own, like, little windows. If they fail to open this door, they open that little window. Uh -huh. uh, if you understand what I'm saying. So, but we, for us, it's, it's, there's no such thing. God says, Jesus says, uh, for instance, he says, if somebody strikes you on the cheek, give him the other cheek. This is, this is different. This is a different kettle of fish. This is a totally different game. Mm -hmm. Not everybody can do that. I'm struggling to do that. I can't do that. You know, I, I, somebody shoot me, I'll shoot them back. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's how I am. I'm, I'm like Moses. I have a short temper. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying, uh, we are not under the law. We are above the law. How is that? Because we are kings and priests. We can go into the temple. We can go into the Holy of Holies boldly and stand there and pray. Before, Jews couldn't do that. Yeah. They can't do that. It, 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 after Jew, Judaism, uh, Christianity came and uh, Christianity or Christ came and says, look, you're under the law, you, you, you cannot fulfill 613 laws every day of your life. Mm -hmm. You need a sacrifice. And they were cutting, sacrificing animals, bulls and sheep. Uh, and they were doing all that and they still do that to this day. But he says, that is not answering anymore. That is not covering your sins anymore. Mm -hmm. Your sins have grown so much, it's gone to the he to heavens. And, and you need to have a sacrifice and God has sent his own sacrifice. You can't sacrifice an animal anymore. The blood of a bull or a sheep doesn't wipe your uh, sins anymore. Mm -hmm. It has to. It doesn't cover. It used to actually it never. It never cut. It never wiped. It always covered the sin. Yeah. But now, but with Jesus' blood, if you believe in His shed blood on the Calvary, then your sins not only wipe. It's all or wiped away. It's gone. Spiritually. Mm -hmm. Spiritually, you're born again. Physically, 
you still have things to pay, to, to pay back. Because if you've done sin, if you've committed sins, um, your physical sins in this world, you pay back in this world to clear, to, you know, to, to, to balance yeah, it all I out. I think you'll have to touch on that one another time because that's just another new kettle yeah, yeah. of fish. And We're not this getting... is something that most people have never even thought of or, yeah, or so even you, grasped. You've got, you, you are forgiven, your sins are forgiven if you die today, right at that moment when you are asking for repentance of your sins and you believe, you put your trust on the blood of Jesus and the body of Christ, then you're forgiven and that moment, uh, like Jesus says to the thief on his right hand, who says, um, uh, when you go to paradise, remember me. And he says, today you will be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. and, and that just that just tells you a lot of stories that because he puts his trust on him, on the cross, he says, I put my trust in you. He says, your, your sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. So you immediately are forgiven, your sins are forgiven, you go to heaven. But you physically, if you're in this world to stay it's still alive, for a few more years or whatever, how many years, then you have to, your physical body will have to pay some penalties because you've committed sin against your own, your own physical body. Mm -hmm. That's another sermon. Okay, let's wrap up then. So at this moment, we're closing for the, for the moment and we'll see you again another another session. <laughs>